In this video, we're going to go over how to set up our work drawing for the cow catcher. So if you don't have the cow catcher made already, make sure you go back to that video or the handout to find out how to make that part. So I already have a C size drawing um, opened up. Uh, it's the default, so you don't have to change anything. You can just leave it as is. So I'm going to go to base, and I'm going to make sure that my cow catcher is selected. And for this one, the best scale I've found is 2 to 1, so we can fit everything on this because we're going to have a lot of different views. For the first view, you're going to have your front. Uh, it might not say front for the orientation, but uh, this is how it will look on your screen. You're going to place that roughly around here. And you're going to also place in a top view, a bottom view, a right side view, and your isometric. So once you place these in, you can right click and create. The next thing we're going to do is put in our back view. So to do that, we need to use projected. And you're going to click on our right side view because we're going to be projecting off of that view. And now we can click and right click to create. Okay. So right now we have our basic views that you guys are used to seeing. Um, the back view is a little bit new except for it's just a very easy thing to bring in just using projected. Also, if you forget something like bringing in your bottom view on a work drawing or something else, uh, as long as you're projecting it off of, uh, for most of these, the front view, you're all set. If it's the back view, you're going to need to do that off the right side view. So next, we're going to do the auxiliary view. So for that one, you're going to click the auxiliary tool. We're going to click our bottom view. And here is the little bit of a tricky spot that um, people tend to forget. Make sure you check this box, and I'll show you why in a second. And then we're going to click this line and click right here. So that checkbox I was referring to uh, places this line in. If you don't do that checkbox, this line won't show up. You're going to have to delete your view and then put it back in. So next we're going to do a section view. And we're going to take that off of our right side view. So click on our right side view. This one I'm going to try to get roughly in the middle. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you get it up or down a little bit, just make sure it's nice and level. So I'm going to click again, right click, continue. And now I can bring this down. All right. If you happen to make a mistake and delete different views, you can always change uh, the view identifier letter. And just make sure you go from A and then B and then just keep going until you place all of the views in that you need. Right. The next one I'm going to do is a detail view. There's going to be two of those. That's going to show these little pegs just so we get kind of zoomed in a little bit. So remember, we're working on a C size paper. So if you're looking at it just by normal pages, it's actually four pages, uh, like printer pages, taped together. So even though everything looks tiny on here, it's actually not. Okay, so a detail view. So now I'm going to click on our right side view. And our window pops up, and you can see that each time you add in an extra view, it's going to pop up uh, with the next letter. So we have A for auxiliary, B for our section view, and C for our first uh, detailed view. So I need to click again, and that will bring up this circle. Uh, the center of the circle is exactly where you clicked. And then you just could drag this out. Make sure the letter is on the outside of the part, not on the inside of the part. And then make sure you have all of your feature. Click and you can place it. Okay, so now you have your detailed view. Just by default, it's always twice as large as your scale. And then also for your section view, it will say the exact scale of the rest of your work drawing. So if you figure out what scale you have, you could do that, or you could just double click on one of the views and it'll pop up right there. Okay, we're gonna add in one last detail view. So click detail again, now we're on D. Okay, the scale is automatically set. If you need to, you can change it. But for this, we could just leave it to uh, the default where it just doubles. So for this one, um, I like to do this peg. You do really any of them. I'm going to click right in the center, click off to the side. Oop. Make sure you get the edges. Uh, sometimes it's a little tricky to get the hang of it. Oop. All right, let's try a different one. OK. And let's see. All right, sometimes it doesn't quite work. Um, I'm not sure why exactly. 
we have that little bit of an issue. Uh, well, let's try a different shape. So our fence shape, normally it starts at a circle, um, and then you can change it to a rectangle. All right. Okay, so as you can tell, sometimes this doesn't quite work perfectly. So what you can do sometimes is, uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but if you save it, close it, and then open it again, it sometimes fixes this little issue. Uh, don't know why, but it just does. So now if we could just double click on here, click on our blue cylinder so we could shade it, add that in. Remember, uh, try to add in the last detail view so you have a zoomed in version of there. Uh, if you can, if not, you don't really need them because of how large the paper actually is. It just makes it a little bit easier to space out your dimensions. For this one, easiest way to dimension this is make sure you have the handout in front of you and cross out the dimensions as you go. Because if you do that, then you know you have them all in. Because this is a work drawing where there's a lot of different places to place the same dimension. So it's very easy to over dimension. And then there's a lot of strange dimensions you're not used to. So it's also very easy to under dimension at the same time. All right, so good luck.